What first comes to mind when describing my country, Oman, I'd have to say it is a very peaceful and safe country. We live a very basic life and share one religion, Islam. Our culture taught us to greet visitors in our homes, qawa, dates. <laughs> Oman has many beautiful natural sceneries, different environments, from deserts, mountains, to wilds, which is what is unique about Awan is that it has ancient heritage which is seen throughout the country. Forts, castles, villages. We embrace our old heritage and culture. This is my country. Oh man. Oh man. <laughs> Most travelers fly directly into Muscat. We flew to Abu Dhabi since their tickets were much cheaper. From there, by taxi to Dubai, where we boarded the bus that took us to the capital of Oman. Muscat is a stunning destination with a unique blending of tradition and modernity. Our first stop is the Sultan Qaboos Mosque. To get there, we hopped on a local public bus. It's our first day in Muscat. Took a while to arrive here. We left Crete, took the boat, went to Athens, flew to Abu Dhabi, took the bus, went to Dubai, spent the night there. And then by bus, we came last night to Muscat. The next morning, this is the first place we will visit, the Grand Mosque. As we arrived at the mosque, we were struck by its grandeur and beauty. With its towering minarets and elegant white marble exterior, it's truly an impressive sight. Make sure you go early, since for non-Muslims it's open only from 8 to 11 in the morning. After leaving the mosque, we had our first local snack. And in Muscat, it's the first time we'll try Campbell. You what? How is it like? It's like beef, just a bit harder. It's a big camel. Next up, we hopped off the bus at the Royal Opera House Muscat. The modern architecture of the building is a stunning contrast to the traditional surroundings. It would be perfect if you walk also. <laughs> no, you can play Tel Aviv. Hell yeah. In the afternoon, it was time to pick up our rental car. To get there, we walked through Mutra Beach, a popular destination for both locals and tourists in Oman. It is located in the Mutra district of Muscat and offers a stunning view of the Arabian Sea. Locals often visit the beach to relax and enjoy a picnic with family and friends. The car costs 250 euro for 8 days. We'll talk about the total expenses of our trip at the end of this video. And now it's time to leave Muscat to explore other places. But we will be back for our last two days in Oman before we head back home. Nizwa is located in the heart of Oman. On our way there it got dark and we stopped for a snack by the road. So we take one, one, one this and one that. It was some kind of massive bread mixed with fish for Barbara and chicken and curry for me. Try it, try it. Just go, bro, not it. 
Not seven. 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 I had nine. <laughs> Let us know in the comments if you know the name of this dish. Oh, and chicken was a bit spicy for me. I wish I had a cola. After we arrived, we also had some mishka. Mishka. Tell me what you've got. Famous mishka in Nizwa. Mishka. Mishka. Do you eating mishka? Who? Nizwa. Nizwa. <laughs> Nizwa is a city steeped in history, with its iconic Nizwa Fort standing tall as a testament to its rich past. One of the highlights of visiting Nizwa is the traditional goat market that takes place every Friday. We woke up in Nizwa, in Oman, got up very early, 6.30, and we're going to check the goat market. The market is a bustling hub of activity, with locals and tourists alike coming together to experience the unique atmosphere and witness the centuries-old tradition of buying and selling goats. As you wander through the market, you'll see goats of all shapes and sizes, with the vendors proudly displaying their prized animals. About $100. It's not only goats being sold here. Later in the day, it's time for the big boys. Cows. area outside the souk, you can find other animals too. The Nizwa goat market is not just a place to buy and sell goats, but it's also a vibrant cultural experience that gives visitors a glimpse into the traditional way of life of Oman. It's a place where you can immerse yourself in the local culture, meet friendly locals and create memories that will last a lifetime. As you explore the vibrant Nizwa souk, you'll quickly discover that there is more to this busy marketplace than just goats. While the goat market is certainly the main attraction, make sure to take some time to explore the other corners of the souk as well. One such place is the date market, where you'll find a colorful array of dates in all shapes and sizes, from plump and juicy to dried and sweet. And jam! So this one and this one? Half kilo, half kilo? Take a moment to sample some of the different varieties and learn about the importance of dates in Omani culture. Yes. Well, you can walk, you can talk, you can think. <laughs> Another must visit spot is the Halva Market, a true Omani delicacy that is not to be missed. It's a good one? It's good? Yeah, very nice. The best? There is a lot of kinds. Some with the walnut, some with the pistachio, some with honey, some with the... What are you gonna buy? That one with the walnuts. The experience in the goat market was crazy, in the halva market also, but what blew me away is the hospitality and kindness of Omani people, something I've never seen anywhere else before. Of course, no trip to Nizwa is complete without visiting the fort, a symbol of Oman's enduring legacy and a testament to its architectural prowess built in the 17th century. We saw this kind of bread that they sell here in uh, Nizwa in a couple of videos and we could not find it anywhere but only in the fort and it's
It's this bread that they make with egg, ghee, some honey, and some kind of pepper. And it's pretty good. Nizwa isn't just the main destination in Oman. It is also an ideal base for exploring the scenery and cultural sites around this part of the country. Just a short drive away from Nizwa, you will find the Pictures village of Birkat Al Muz, nestled in a last green valley surrounded by towering mountains. You are so cute! <laughs> You can wander through ancient date palm plantations and discover the traditional irrigation system that has been used for centuries to water the crops. Hop! 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 Further afield, we find the historic village of Tanuf, which played an important role in Oman's recent history. This was the site of fierce battles between the Omani forces and the communist insurgents in the 70s. A short drive from Tanuf brings us to the village of Alhamra. This is home to some of the oldest houses in Oman. You can wander through the narrow alleys and soak up the atmosphere of a bygone era. On the way back from Alhambra, we stopped at Baklafort. Baklafort, standing tall and proud, dates back to the pre-Islamic era and bears witness to the many stories and legends that have shaped Oman's past. It is a marvel of architecture and engineering, a true masterpiece of its time. The entrance of this fort is one real, and this place is massive. You can easily get lost for two hours in here. It's like a maze, all the corridors, the aisles, the towers, the rooms. one for two persons. No entrance fee, hardly any people, very, very good. Before leaving, we cool down with some fresh mango juice in the small bakhla souk. <laughs> and finally, we arrive at Misfal Al-Arbrigin. 
a village built into the side of the mountain, with narrowed streets and traditional houses. Here you can experience the warm hospitality of the locals. I'm John. <laughs> I'm Ahmed. We are happy to see somebody here. That means from our from outside this country. And this is because you know our region is like this and our tradition and our culture. Shukran. Learn about the traditional way of life and enjoy the stunning panoramic views of the surrounding mountains and valleys before you hike down to the springs of Misfat's Falas system. So, if you're looking for a truly authentic Oman experience, Nizu and the surrounding areas are the perfect place to start. But now, it's time to head to Oman's highest mountain, Jebel Sams, for an amazing camping experience near the edge of the majestic cliff. Jebel Sams is known for its stunning vistas and breathtaking landscapes. And what better way to experience it all than by camping right next to the cliff. The views are out of this world. We set up our tent, we're about to make some tea, soon we will prepare dinner, and if this is not one of the most epic camping spots, I don't know which would be. This is the sunrise we have today. A group of locals camped near us last night and one of those guys just came over and offered me a cup of Omani coffee and tea. As I said, the people here are amazing. And this is the morning view. This is amazing. After the morning coffee and tea that they offered us, they're leaving the camping now and they left us this. But camping here was only half the plan. Next morning, we are doing the famous balcony walk. The balcony walk is a popular hike that takes you along the edge of the mountain, offering stunning views of the surrounding landscape. After our epic camping and epic sunrise, we drove to Al-Kitam, where we'll start the W6 walk or balcony hike. The balcony walk looks very different from here compared to yesterday when we were up there. The trail can be challenging at times, but the views are worth it. The landscape is so vast and impressive that it's hard to put into words. We 
got to the end after about an hour 30, an hour 40 minutes. Every step of this hike was crazy. This place is impressive. It's crazy. It's amazing. <laughs> After Jebel Sams, we go downhill, and our path leads us to the mystical valley necrosis at the beginning of Wadi Ghul. path W6A gets you up to the village, the point we started the balcony tour. So what's the name of this place? Ghoul. Ghoul. Okay, we started Ghoul. It's like the end or the beginning of the gorge. We were taking the hike earlier. Excellent place to stop. Palm trees everywhere, water, shadow. Oman continues to unfold before us, inviting us to discover the richness of its landscapes and the warmth of its hospitality. As the golden light of the setting sun bathes the valley, we are off to our next stop, Pidilla. As we arrive in Pidilla, we are greeted by another worldly landscape, where towering sand dunes stretch as far as the eye can see. Although our time in Pidilla was brief, we couldn't resist the allure of the dunes. As we ventured into the sea of sand, each step revealed a new facet of this ever-changing desert. <laughs> the wind whispered secrets of the desert, carrying its gentle caress across the vast expanse. Before leaving the area of Bidilla, we stop for lunch. Tell us in the comments below if you know the name of this cold onion soup with pieces of dried fish. And yes, it was that bad. Nestled amidst the rugged mountains, we found Wadi Bani, a symbol of the raw and tough beauty of Oman's natural landscapes. We are greeted by towering cliffs that shelter the crystal clear waters of Wadi Bani, inviting us to immerse ourselves in their cool embrace. But instead, of course, if you are here, that's easy thing, some fispa. <laughs> this place is very beautiful, not so many people as I expected. For sure, it's worth stopping here. After Wadi Bani, we arrived right after sunset at the stunning coastal village of Ras al Had, where we planned to come for the night. That's when we experienced for the first time the magical dance of bioluminescent plankton. And then, out of the blue, we bumped into a huge turtle, making her way to lay her eggs. Slowly we walked away, not to disturb her. Coming back to the car, we saw a baby turtle struggling to find its way, but going the opposite way, towards the city lights some hundred meters away from the sea. We used a piece of paper in order not to touch it and left it close to the water. Somebody, come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go, go! We woke up early to watch the sunrise in a scene of pure serenity. We found ourselves drawn to the water, only to find the baby turtle emerging from the sand, ready to take its first steps towards the ocean.
As we explored the shoreline, we saw countless nests scattered across the sandy beach, crafted by mother turtles during the night. We observed them with great care and respect. A challenge that cannot be ignored is the unfortunate presence of litter on Russell Hut Beach. It is not a reflection of the locals' disregard for their surroundings, but rather a reminder that we all have the responsibility to protect and preserve the natural beauty of our planet. The local community of Oman has a deep respect for nature, treasures their land, and takes pride in its pristine beauty. It was time to leave Ras al Had. Our time here has been nothing short of extraordinary, in this remote corner of Oman, a land where nature's treasures unfold at every turn. A short drive from Ras al-Had, we find the captivating town of Sur, where tradition meets the sea. Sur, located in the eastern coast of Oman, is renowned for its long-standing maritime heritage. Our first stop takes us to Sur's iconic Dao factory, where skilled craftsmen have been building traditional wooden dows for centuries. Sur's cornice was the perfect spot to relax and enjoy panoramic views of the coastline and the lighthouse. Do you like Sur? I love Sur. After a short visit at Sur Chuk, we drove to Wadi Sab, one of many Oman's hot spots. After arriving at Wadi Sab, we hopped on a boat that took us to the other side of the river. We're going only here, yeah? <laughs> and after a long boat ride, two minutes, <laughs> we arrived to the other side. Wadi Sab is very popular and was more crowded compared to other places we visited. After about half an hour of walking, we found a place to leave our stuff and jumped in the water. Swimming in Wadi Sab, the water is not that bad after all. By swimming and walking, we got to the entrance of the hidden cave at the end of the wadi. Not so 
After the swim, it was time for a delightful picnic by the river. We had stopped earlier by a local supermarket, where we found delicious treats and freshly prepared takeaway food. We've got a lot of this, but maybe we can have it for dinner as well. This looked like something people do often in Oman, and we highly recommend you do the same. And this is one of the cool things you get to do in Oman. Whenever you go for a hike, or excursion, or picnic, you can go in one of the big supermarkets like Carrefour or Lulu and buy some takeaway food. And have a picnic in a place like this. On the way back it started raining, so we picked up our pace to get to the car and drove to our camping spot for the night. But first, we stopped briefly at one of Oman's most renowned attractions, the Bima Sinkhole. It is said to have formed naturally through the collapse of an underground limestone cavern, revealing a sinkhole filled with turquoise blue waters. An intriguing geological formation which, though often featured in travel videos, I must admit left him somewhat unimpressed. Perhaps my expectations were too high. To put it in other words, it's probably the place I remember the least from Oman. This setup wasn't planned exactly like this. When we finished what is up yesterday, it was too late to drive to Muscat and shot our friend in the beach nearby. So instead we drove to Kuriyat, slept by the beach, and now in the morning we came in the lake park of Kuriyat. We'll make our breakfast here, and it's really, really nice. Today we have prepared yajka, ogórki, pomidory, serek, chobza, arabska. How was your experience with driving here in Oman? One of the safest places I've driven. Very comfortable, the roads are good, the drives are very good, not so much traffic. So you recommend Excellent. to rent a car? Yes, definitely. Rent a car if you come to Oman and experience the country. Thank you for this short interview. After the fish market, we had a look at the Flamingo Lake to see some, you guessed right, flamingos. Leaving the area of Kuriyat, we had a short coffee break before returning to Muscat. Cafe Daki? Yes, Hi, how are you? Fine, you? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Hey, where's the coffee? The coffee. Uh, but black. Which was yet another chance to have a brief conversation with the incredibly polite locals. Yes, I know this, but we can drink. How much is it? We came back to Muscat for our last two days, so we headed to the Mutra Souk. You like shoes? The Shukran. I don't have money, he's got money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> this one too, and what's the difference? Different this one for you, it's smell fish. Okay. Here you can find everything, from traditional Omani textiles and handicrafts, to modern clothing and souvenirs. is here. Periman, wait, 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 man. You think here? Oh, here they've got something. Oh, 
Parut fish. No. And this, what's this? What is this? Big one. Whoa. <laughs> Excuse me, take photo, me and Jackie. <laughs> no, no, it's not interesting. I want with fish. <laughs> Next morning, we visited the nearby Mutra Fort and Cornish, where we enjoyed stunning views of the sea and the city's port. We also made our way to the Al Alam Palace, a breathtaking royal residence that is a symbol of Oman's rich cultural heritage. also explored some of the city's parks, including the Al Riyan Park with its beautiful fountains and gardens. Going briefly over the cost. For the car we paid a total of 290 euros. 250 for the rent, 30 for fuel, yes it is very cheap, and 10 euros to drop the car at the airport. For accommodation we paid 125 for 5 nights, as 3 nights were spent in our tent. By adding the rest of the expenses, groceries, entrances to different sites, food, coffee, snacks, we paid in total around 600 euros for 8 days. I can say that Oman stands out as a jewel in the crown of hospitality. But it's not just the people, it's the diversity that lies within the country's borders, from the towering peaks of Jebel Sams to the crystal clear waters of the Arabian Sea. To the people of Oman, I offer my deepest gratitude for embracing us with your true kindness and politeness. To all travelers, I urge you to visit this country, embrace the magic and beauty it will offer you. Thank you, Oman. If you like this video, hit the like button and make sure you subscribe not to miss more videos like this from Raja Ampat, East Java, Malta, Cappadocia and of course Greece. Thank you for watching, see you next time.